The Warhammer universe is a pretty rough place, with the constant warfare making everything very dusty and cratery, it's no surprise that things can get a bit beat up and grimy. Representing this on your models is called weathering, and this can be achieved in many ways, from oil washes, streaking grime, sponges, pigments and chipping medium, to name a few. In this video I'm going to be primarily focusing on chipping medium on this Land Raider Spartan, but we'll touch briefly on oil washes and pigments later on. Those topics can be pretty extensive on their own, but I'll give you enough info to get started. All these techniques look great on the 30k models, because for some reason they're always a little bit more beat up in the 31st millennium. Maybe the Emperor couldn't afford to pay for the premium pain protection offered by the Mechanicum. Galactic Civil War isn't cheap after all. The Mortarian model that you see in this intro was my original intention for this video, but all the footage was a little bit too dark so I had to scrap that. But luckily enough I've got this Land Raider Spartan on hand to fill in. Start off by priming your model in whichever primer you want to use. I tend to use this Vallejo Surface Primer through an airbrush, which is my favourite method. This primer colour doesn't matter too much because it's all about this next colour we're going to use, which is this charred brown from Game Air. Now obviously you don't have to use this exact brand or colour, but brown is what I'll definitely recommend for this. Because this is the colour we're going to see underneath our chipped paint. At this stage it doesn't really matter what colour your final colour is going to be because you're going to have a chance to prep and pre-shade that in the next couple of steps. And now for the chipping medium itself. I'm using Vallejo chipping medium. This is because it's thin enough to go through an airbrush. Now you can apply this with a regular brush, it's just going to take you a little bit longer. And as it's going on through the airbrush, it'll look like it's clumping up, but that's perfectly normal. You may find you will need to increase the air pressure on your airbrush just a tiny amount to get it through. And you can actually thin this if you're having even more difficulties, just with a little bit of airbrush thinner. Just don't use water because that will interfere with the chipping effect. And once you've coated all the areas that are going to be painted, we are just going to leave it to dry for at least half an hour. And I'm not sure if you can actually speed this up with a hairdryer, but I wouldn't recommend it. When this dries, it'll still look glossy, but it should be dry to the touch. And now you can start painting your army colours. And because I want to try these new Citadel contrast paints, I'm going to be pre-shading this with white. And I'm doing this because these contrast paints are very transparent, and if I didn't it would look very very dark. However, I still want some of the recesses to look dark, that's why I'm going to be pre-shading this in a zenithal style. Alright, everyone here wants to see my style. This just means spraying it from above, which is going to give you some really nice shading on the vertical areas. And I'm also going to focus the spray on some of the flatter areas and also on the edges that I can reach easily. This is just going to make the yellow a little bit brighter when we put it on. And just to give it a little bit more variation with the colouring. Once that white's dry we're going to come in with our contrast paint. And to apply this I'm going to be using the airbrush again. Now these paints were made for airbrushes. They come out so smoothly and the pigment distribution is just really nice. Considering how thin the paint actually is. And we should only need one coat of this. In the past when using chipping medium, two colours is probably the max I've ever actually experimented with, meaning two coats of paint after you've done the chipping medium. But it doesn't really seem to affect the next stage very much, so if you wanted to do some extreme highlights with multiple colours, I think that would be fine. But seeing as we did the pre-shade and we're using the super transparent contrast paints, two colours is going to be fine for this project. Now this is where the magic happens. When everything's completely dry, I'm just going to fill my airbrush with water and start spraying it over the top. And if you haven't got an airbrush, you can just use a spray bottle filled with water and it'll do pretty much the same thing. And I'm just going to do this one section at a time because you get a maximum working time with this. And if you do find that it's starting to get a bit hard to get off, you can just re-moisten it again. And you can repeat that as many times as you like. And once the water's been sitting on there for a couple of minutes, just grab yourself a really old dry brush or something that's got really stiff bristles. I've even seen people using toothbrushes and bits of wire wool, things like that. Just anything that you feel is quite abrasive. And then just start stippling this all over the model and you'll start to see flecks of paint starting to come off. And different brands of chipping medium might react differently, so it's good to just go in a little bit gingerly just in case. And if you notice nothing's coming off like now, just leave it for a little bit longer and maybe add a little bit more water. And I left this for a couple more minutes and as you can see now it's coming off much more easily. And I'm going to be focusing mainly on the edges of this because I feel that's where the paint would begin to chip first. And I've sped this footage a bit up for you so you can see the whole process as we go. Don't forget every so often just rinse your brush off because a lot of that yellow is going to get stuck into the bristles and you're just going to end up moving it around to other places. 
repeat this process over all the other areas that you want to be chipped. And I just find that doing it section by section just gives you less pressure to get it finished quickly. And there we have a nicely chipped up tank. Now this didn't take much time at all, probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Now this is an essential step when using chipping medium and that is using a varnish to seal it. And if we didn't use a varnish it could keep chipping indefinitely and you really don't want that. I'm using a matte varnish for this because I'm going to continue painting and I hate painting on gloss. Once that's dry I'm just going to finish off all these extra details and I'm using Vallejo metal colour gunmetal grey for all the black parts and the tracks. And then I'm going to wash all those parts with black templar contrast paint. Then down to about 50% just using water. And I've started using this instead of Nolan oil which is what I used to use just because it seems a little bit stronger the black pigment. And just covering over all the other metallic parts that you've just painted. And the only other two colours I've used on this model are Zandri Dust and Scale 75 Viking Gold. And to highlight all these metallics I'm using Exhaust Manifold from Vallejo Metal Colour and I'm just going to lightly place this over all the edges of this black metallic. Including the Aquila on the doors and the tracks of course. Now this model would look great on the battlefield as it is but as it's for YouTube I'm going to take it a little step further. And this is going to involve using oil washes and the first step to this is varnishing your model again but this time in a gloss varnish. And for this I'm using Mission Models Airbrush Gloss Varnish. And the reason we use a gloss varnish for this is because it's going to help the oil wash flow into all the recesses. This is called capillary action. Something to do with surface tension and all that scientific stuff. And I'm going to try and avoid the tracks when I'm doing this because I'm not going to be placing any varnish onto them. Instead I'll be using a pigment for those later. To make the oil wash you're going to need two things, an odorless thinner and of course some oil paints. The colours I'm going to be using are Abtai Long Sepia and Windsor & Newton Cadmium Orange. And the reason I'm using these two colours is because this sepia is quite dark and I want that orange just to brighten up a little bit. And also when it settles into the recesses you get a slight oranginess which hints at rust which is an also cool little free weathering effect. And I suggest using a sealed jar for this because then you can keep it for later because this paint can be quite expensive but it does go a long way having said that. And using an old synthetic brush, now that is important because if you use your sable brushes it's just going to wreck them. And just eyeballing it, mix those paints together with a bit of the odorless thinner. And a good rule of thumb to know if you've got enough on there is to brush it up against the side of the jar and if you can still see the colour on there it's usually thick enough. And if it just runs off the glass leaving it clear then you probably need a little bit more paint. And just because this is odorless thinner, it doesn't mean it's not dangerous to your lungs. So please use a respirator while you're doing this, or you'll find yourself a little bit lightheaded. And when you're happy with your mix, we're just going to slot this all over this model. And you can be pretty liberal with this because we're going to have a chance to remove any excess bits later on. And as you can see here, this gloss varnish just takes it into those recesses really nicely. And this is one of the beauties of using these oil washes. You do have a chance to clean it up afterwards, so you can really speed this process up. If I was to give one disadvantage to using oil washes is that it takes a very long time to dry. Most cases I'll leave this overnight to dry and it does dry quite glossy also so it's sometimes hard to tell when it's actually set and dry. So better to leave it longer. And while this oil wash is drying we'll have a chance to do all these other little bits of weathering. And for the tracks I'm going to be using this MIG pigment track rust. And using an old dry brush I'm just going to be placing this directly into all the little joints on the tracks. Now at first this looks pretty harsh but I'm just going to keep brushing over it until, oh that's a little bit there, just working it in until it dilutes and if you want to add more just chuck some more on there. Now it's time to clean up any of this oil wash that we no longer want on the model and for me this is going to be mostly the flat areas. And the thinner I'm using is this Abtai Long Odorless Thinner but you can get cheaper stuff, this is just what was available to me at my local game shop. And using a cotton wool bud or a q-tip just stab a little bit on the end and start wiping it off you notice this stuff comes off pretty much straight away. And sometimes you'll notice as you're taking this off, some of it will flow back into the recesses, which isn't a problem, as it's going to boost those dark recesses for you. And I decided to add a little bonus tip on the end of this video, we're going to be doing some heat burn on these barrels. And using contrast paint, starting with shyish purple, we're going to paint the first half of these barrels. And whilst it's still drying, we'll come in with this Gillum and Flesh and do the other half. And because they're both wet, they should blend nicely in the middle. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you've learned something new from this video and if you've got any cool ideas of how to use chipping medium let us know in the comments below. 
I'm sure there's some crazy ways you can use it that I've not even thought of before. I've also heard that using hairspray instead of chipping medium works just as well, but I haven't actually tried that myself, but I'll be interested to know in the comments also if you've tried that method. And even if you didn't learn anything from this video, if you enjoyed it, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. We hope to be growing as much as possible in the next 12 months and we want to be able to deliver the best content we possibly can. And I'll also be live streaming when Immortal Empires comes out for Warhammer Total War, which is on the 23rd of August, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching.